So what I want to do today is to give you a bit of a summary about how our project has got to where it is and where we currently are, and then just a wee bit information about Big Y and exactly how it's been taken up in Northern Ireland. So the first thing I want to show you here is just some figures. In terms of the mitochondrial DNA, if we look at that first, the first thing I'll show you is that in our project, we have at the moment, as of today, 7,783 people in our project. Now, obviously, a lot of those people have maybe are family members of others. So therefore, there may be brothers and sisters or cousins who would all share the same mitochondrial line. So that means that not everyone needs to take a mitochondrial test, because if you've got six or seven people tested in your family, they've all got the one line, well, then you're only going to test one of them. So what we've got out of that 7,783, 1,457 have taken some version of mitochondrial testing. I actually think that's really good. I think that's quite a high figure. But the early version of the mitochondrial test was removed a number of years ago. It wasn't made available anymore and it was combined with an additional test which is the HBR2 and then the product was called the MT plus test and you can see that uh, slightly less people have done it because some have done just the HBR1 and not upgraded to the HBR2 level and then eventually family tree DNA decided that we're getting rid of that version too and they now do the full genome. So they look at every single point within your mitochondrial DNA, all 16,000 points. And there's now 1,333 people have done that test. So, so all those 1,333 are included in these and included in those as well. So those figures are just slightly higher because a few extra people have done those tests, but they haven't yet upgraded to the MT full test. And that's possible for people to do that. But it's still a very good figure. And it's a high portion of the total number in our project, because you have to take into consideration that a lot of people wouldn't need to do that MT test, because as I said, they are siblings or cousins of someone who's already taken the test. In terms of family finder, nearly everybody in our project has done some version of autosomal test. They may have done an ancestry or a 23andMe or a MyHeritage test and then done an autosomal transfer to family tree DNA. But of those 7,783 people, 4,387 have taken that test with FTDNA. And that's good because the kits are more compatible and it means you get a better result because there's a slight error rate when you do an autosomal transfer into the project. It's still pretty good and it's good enough for most people, but it means that uh, just those original tests are always slightly better. So it's again a very high portion of the total because the other 7,300 or whatever would nearly all have done autosomal. We have very few people in our project that haven't done autosomal because it's a geographic project. And geographic project means that you're looking for people in that area. And it's easier to do that with the autosomal DNA than it is with the mitochondrial or the Y DNA. So as well as that, there is some people in the pipeline. We've got 23 people are currently waiting for mitochondrial results. So that's going to be another 23 going in there. And we have 18 people that have are, have done the family finder test and are currently waiting for results. There's probably about another 100 or 150 people have paid for a family finder but haven't yet sent back the test kit. So I haven't included them. I've only included people here that are currently in the lab that are having their DNA processed. But that's still showing how this is feeding in week by week by week. In terms of Y DNA, again, we're still looking at the same people in the project, the same 7,700 people. Well, there's 2,374 people have done the Y37 test. And again, that's even higher than the mitochondrial. So that's a very good proportion. 
again, we're having the same situation where people have tested brothers and uncles and cousins that have the same surname, and therefore there'd be no necessity to do a lot of different Y testing on those different individuals. When you then look at the Y67, again, quite a lot of people have upgraded to the Y67. That's now been withdrawn, and the Y111 is there. So you can see these numbers are coming down a bit. And that's because some people are just doing 37 and haven't upgraded to these higher levels. But what I really want to draw your attention to today is the very large numbers that have now upgraded to the big Y700. And that has actually surprised me because it hasn't been going for as long and it shows that people are getting real value out of their Y-DNA because they're upgrading to the highest possible test and they're getting good information out of that. So at the moment, there's one, two, seven, five have done that. So again, that's out of the total of 2,374 people who have done a version of Y testing. And look at many we have waiting for results at the moment. Again, this is just people that have returned their sample and are currently having them processed by FTDNA. Another 31, that's going to take us over 1,300. We've got four people waiting for Y111 results and one new person has decided to do a Y37. So they're on the way. And this is why these numbers are continually rising within our project. So I just thought that was a bit of an overview. And I must say that from lockdown, uh, we have found that an awful lot of people were, were doing multiple autosomal tests on family members. And when lockdown hit, that sort of changed slightly. And people started to do more mitochondrial and Y testing in Northern Ireland. And that was because they were doing more tests on themselves. And I think those numbers really show that a high proportion of people are now doing that, which I think is broadening out everything and really help them. So what I'm going to just show you now is just the advantage of the big Y test. And I just thought this was an interesting way of looking at things. So what I've done here is I have looked at the results that we have had back in November for big Y results. And what I've done is I've had a look at the results that we've had back and we've had 15 people have had results on big Y already this month. So we just uh, decided to select these 15 people. And I just looked at the number of matches that they had with other Y testers at each of the levels of Y. And I wanted to see, just to show you how this has changed over time as the different tests have really got more strength and are appearing more on people's matches list. So this is the Y37 level. So if you test the Y37, this is the number of results that you would get. I think something went wrong on my screen there. Sorry, I don't know what happened there. Can you all still hear me okay? Yeah, I think you can. Okay, right. So if you if 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 you look at this top one, uh, this person had 1,905 matches at Y37 level. When they upgraded to Y67, they suddenly got more matches at the Y67. And this is something that people don't fully appreciate. If you've only done a lower level of Y, you don't sometimes realize that you're going to get more matches at a higher level. And the reason for that is that you might be one of the people that has a lot of differences in your DNA in those earlier markers. And if you are, then you can get more matches at a higher level. So look the way it catapulted up to 2,141. But then when they got the 111 results, it fell all the way down to seven. So this gives them a very defined number of matches. So you can see there's, uh, 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 you know, there's no real pattern. Some people have went from eight to eight to five. There's one there that really catapulted up at Y67 level. You know, it, 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 it went about five times higher and then come right down again to a tenth of what it was at the Y37 level. So you can see that it is definitely possible to get more matches at a higher level of Y testing. Now, the Y67 has now been withdrawn, but 
if you test at the 111 level, you will also get results at Y67 level because some people have only tested to that level. And it means that you can still compare at the Y67 level. So you can see the differences there. Now, what I really did this for was I had noticed a few slightly surprising big Y results coming through. And what I wanted to do was look at these 15 kits and see how they changed and what uh, number of matches they would get at the big Y level. Now, a few years back, because big Y was in its infancy, it meant that everybody got a small number of matches at the big Y level. Now, the big Y level is the most accurate because it's comparing far more DNA and it's identifying particular mutations or, or variants, if you want to call them, that are part of your DNA. And because it is sharing them and identifying them, it's a very accurate way of working with your Y DNA. And it's more accurate than the Y37, 67, and 111 levels. So if I just keep those figures on the screen and add in the numbers for big Y, you might see a few surprises. Now look at that top one to start with. We had 2,000 matches at 67 level. Then we only had seven matches at 111. Look how many big Y matches there was. 239. Now that's quite incredible to me. That one there is even more of a difference. 67 matches at 37. 193 at 67. Only one match at Y111 three hundred and fifty five matches on big Y. And look at this one down here. Two hundred and thirty nine down to twenty nine. Zero matches at one one one. Most people at that stage would go, well, I've got no matches at one one one. There's no point in me upgrading. But this person did and they got six hundred and sixty four matches at big Y. And this is the type of statistics that I think are very interesting to look at because it shows you the real value that you can get if you upgrade to Big Y. Now, because people are in different haplogroups groups and different groups, then that type of number of matches isn't always possible because it also depends how many people there are on the planet with your Y signature. And it also depends how many of them have been interested in DNA testing. So, I mean, you may end up as this person down here who has one match, Y37, one the whole way through. So that could happen. But even down here, somebody with three matches went to one at 67 and 111. Suddenly they got 10. So you can see that quite a lot of people now are traditionally getting more matches at the big Y level than they are at the 111 level. And I thought that was very interesting because I had noticed a few differences coming through. I think I noticed that one actually very, very strongly when it came through. But I didn't really know if there was a trend. But when I looked at 15 kits and I just picked the most recent 15 kits, I saw as I couldn't be accused of, you know, producing these figures in a different way. That this is just the last 15 people who have had big Y results. And I think the results are actually quite impressive there. And this is because more people are doing big Y and because they are now getting better and more informed matches to each other. And I think this is only going to get better as time goes on. So just if I summarize that slightly and just give you a bit more information on that. When we look at the big Y, I also wanted to see if we got a matching surname. Because I'm telling you now, you know, that those people got 355 matches. Well, that's not great if all of the matches are totally different surnames and you don't know what you have to work with. But nine out of those 15 kits all got a matching surname. And interestingly enough, one of them didn't get it at Y37, Y67, or Y111. They only got it at the big Y level. And that was interesting to me because I, I suppose I hadn't looked for that before, but I hadn't definitely noticed it before. So I thought that was a very interesting statistic. So that's, that's a good 60% chance. Now, I don't know the history of all the people there. It could be that some of those people knew that their Y line was not of the same surname 
as their name. But what I was doing for the purposes of this little test was I was looking for the surname in the Y-DNA to be the same as the tester. And I just thought that was the simplest way to do it. But I don't know if 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 some of these people were aware, maybe they were adopted or the surname in their Y-line had changed, they may be aware of that. So that it may be higher than that. But I could definitely verify that 60% of those kits produced a matching surname. We also found that 10 out of those 15 kits, which is a total of 66%, had more matches at big Y than at Y111 level. And as I've shown you there, three kits had massive differences. So I thought that was really interesting to know too, that I, in my head, I would have always thought that at big Y, you've got less matches than 111, because that's the way it was for a number of years. And although I'd noticed a few changes coming through, I hadn't really analyzed it until I did this experiment. So I thought that was interesting to find that. More than half of the Y37 testers have now upgraded, and that's really good too. So it's 54% of all Y testers have now done the big Y. So that's a high number, and it should give people more confidence if they're considering upgrading. Because I think what a lot of people do is they look at the price and they go, that's quite expensive. What's it going to tell me? Am I going to get a matching surname? Am I really going to get enough matches to make it worthwhile? And what I'm really saying now is that I think we've got to the stage where we are getting very high numbers taking up big Y and people are getting good results out of it. Because if they weren't, they wouldn't get matching surnames. They wouldn't be getting lots of matches and they wouldn't have be investing their money into this because you do find that people are testing various lines within their family. It's not always different people. Now, I, for, for example, have done four different big Y tests on four different lines in my family now, and I'm hoping to do another one or two over the coming year. So when you do that, you can get more information on all of those lines. All of our project kits, nearly all of them have family finder, or some type of autosomal testing, there'll be a transfer from one of the companies. So that's very, very reassuring too. So when you compare your DNA and you look at advanced matches and you look at who you match within our project, then you're comparing to over 7,000 matches because that's the number in our project. And as more people join our project, you will get more comparisons and more matches whenever you use the advanced matches facility. And again, the vast majority of the mitochondrial results now are all full sequence. And again, that's a benefit because it means that people are comparing at the highest level of mitochondrial testing. And that's the most accurate level, a bit like big Y is compared to the Y37. It's a more accurate level and it gives a better comparison and it gives you a better output at the end of it and gives you more to work with. So, I would say that we are finding a very high level of Y and mitochondrial testing in the north of Ireland. It's surprising for a geographical project, but I think it's probably partly due to the fact that we've been doing a lot of education and been talking about Y and mitochondrial DNA. And I think the exposure to that really helps people to understand it better and, to, and then they're more prepared to use it and try to draw conclusions from it. So I think that because we have been doing this, we're now getting better results. People are getting a higher number of matches. They find it more useful. They're more likely to do it again. And it just makes everything work that wee bit better. 